Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Coffelt with Fox 35. Good day, Orlando. So wonderful to see all of your faces this evening. Um, I am truly blessed and honored to be here before you and to share with you that I love each and every one of you, uh, that I know that God's grace is shining down on us. And I am so very thankful, Nancy, for you pointing out the rainbow and for us being able to witness that rainbow tonight to know that the 49 are here with us this evening. I also want to share with you some of the friendships and bonds that I've made with a few of the folks uh, who were impacted by what happened at Pulse, one of them being Mr. Brandon Wolf, who has become a dear friend over the last five years. He is one of the very first people that I met um, connected with what happened here. And, and he's such a beautiful soul and is doing wonderful things to make the world a better place. So thank you, Brandon. And I want to share with you, um, I had a pleasure of speaking to Amanda Grau this week. Amanda was shot four times here five years ago. Um, and Amanda was doing an interview with me and sharing with me what happened to her uh, this night and um, horrific events of the evening, talking to me about how she crawled from the inside to the bathroom and how she was shot three more times in the bathroom and just and what she went through that evening. Um, in the end of the interview, I got to ask her about something very special that happened to her. She was the recipient of the One Pulse Foundation scholarship. And if, I, I don't know if any of you got a chance to see, but she was just bursting with happiness. Uh, she said that she wanted that scholarship so desperately because she was so uh, so amazed by the EMTs who saved her life that night that she wanted to go to EMT and firefighter school. And because of that scholarship, she was able to achieve her dream. So thank you so much, Earl, for highlighting uh, the good that was done because it is truly a blessing. And it, I, I just the, the pride and the happiness on her face, she was just so grateful. So thank you. Um, now I have the pleasure of introducing one of my favorite people right here. Uh, I want to say uh, that Jerry Demings is the first African-American mayor of Orange County after becoming Orlando's first African-American police chiefs and the first African-American Orange County sheriff. He's got quite a resume. Always a trailblazer, Mayor Demings says that his goal is to make Orange County the experimental prototype community of tomorrow by creating a community culture of innovation, collaboration, and inclusiveness. And of course, we can always count on Mr. Mayor Demings to lead us in good times and bad. He's, as you know, he was instrumental in providing leadership during and after the Pulse nightclub tragedy. So please join me in welcoming Orange County Mayor Jerry L. Demings. Thank you, Amy, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, good evening to all of you. It's an honor for me to be here tonight and to participate in this program of remembrance and reflection. If you're like me, maybe you don't know quite how to feel about being here tonight. But each year that we have come to remember that tragic morning, it takes me back to a place when I first got that phone call at 2.10, 2.15 a.m. on June the 12th. My watch commander called me and shared with me that he had responded with staff from the Orange County Sheriff's Office. At the time, I was the Orange County Sheriff. And my wife heard the conversation that I was having with the watch commander. And she knew that it was something extraordinary that had occurred. I got out of my bed, put on my uniform, and responded. When I got about a block away, I encountered an Orlando police sergeant and an Orange County deputy sheriff. When I looked those two individuals in their eyes, I saw something that I had only seen in the eyes of law enforcement officers on some very rare occasions. I saw fear. I saw pain. I saw blank stares. And as I responded into the scene, I had the opportunity to encounter one of the survivors. And I remember looking into the face of one of the survivors. And I saw that same 
look that I had seen in those law enforcement officers. So I knew things were bad. Uh, as we proceeded that morning and working with the Orlando Police Department, the FBI, and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, while it was still a very much an active shooter scene, as we were there in the command post, I remember at the time Chief Mina, now Sheriff Mina, I remember speaking with firefighters and and others and the OPD incident commander. I remember hearing the conversation between a crisis negotiator and the subject. I remember very vividly what was going on. And I remember placing a phone call to then Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs, as you've heard now the school board chair. But I remember in that command post, as the scene was eventually stabilized, I do remember before any of us ever went out and talked to the media, and having a conversation with Mayor Dyer and others. What we said was that it is important to this community that we show unity, that we show that we will not be defined by this terror attack from the very beginning. And uh, it takes me back to some other emotions because it was an emotional event. Um, that Monday morning after the Sunday, I swore in some brand new deputy sheriffs. And within just a few days, a couple of them brand new resigned. They never hit the streets. And fast forward as we have now gone through all of what this community went through. I do remember the Monday afterwards, one of the survivors uh, came here to the scene and he had left his car. He couldn't get his car because the scene was contained. It was still controlled. And uh, media personality brought him over to me. And this young man had been inside the Pulse nightclub during the incident. Now it's a day and a half later. As he approached me, he was shaking profusely. Tears in his eyes. And he said to me he had not slept because he could not. He said every time he closed his eyes, he could relive the experience that he had endured. And I said to him at the time, I knew because of many of the volunteer counselors who were here at the scene, we quickly took him to one of them. They put their arms around him. They showed him love at that time. So here we are. Here we are five years later. None of us had a crystal ball. We couldn't imagine what would happen. We could have assumed that there would be some type of memorial site, but Thanks to the One Pulse Foundation and that entire volunteer board and a lot of people, this memorial site has become a reality. It is part of the commitment that we made as a community
that we will never forget those 49 angels and the other survivors. Even recently, I was at the Orange County History Center on Friday, going through the exhibit, and I had the opportunity to see one of our surviving families, the Alvere family, Myra Alvere and the mother of one of the 49 angels, Amanda, was there. And immediately, as we saw one another, there were no words, just love, just an embrace. So let me just say to this entire community where I was born and raised, let me just say to all of you, thank you for not letting hate win. Thank you for letting love win in this community. That's the kind of community that we all want to live in. That's the kind of nation that we all want to live in, where we respect and understand our differences as we endeavor to be the United States of America. So this evening, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come before you. We have made a commitment even from Orange County government. Some of my colleagues on the Board of County Commission are here. And that $10 million down payment that Orange County made to make this memorial site what it can be, we are honored to serve all of you. May God continue to bless each one of the 49 families and the others who were impacted by this tragedy. May God continue to bless this great community that we live in. Thank you so much.